So for peace of mind, call us today at 237-0543 or visit us on the web at laneysinc.com. 828 is just great. This is Weather and Ag in Focus with Bridget Riedel, Justin Storm, and Dean Wysocki. And welcome to Weather and Ag in Focus. Thanks for joining us. It is 105 on this Tuesday afternoon and a, a fairly decent day out there, minus the sunshine. We could all be using a little bit more sunshine out there, but nonetheless, we have above average temperatures in the forecast, and we got a rundown on that forecast for this Christmas week and weekend. I know there's been lots of uh, talk. We don't need any sunshine with your glowing personality. I, that brightens up the room right there. We don't need any sunshine. Scathing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Bridget, how are you doing today? Do you need some sunshine or am I enough? She's on mute. Mm. You're on mute, That's Bridget. very nice to say. There you go. <laughs> no? All right. Oh, well, all right. we're well, having Bridget's, some technical right, so difficulties gonna, with Bridget. Well, let's let's go uh, into the forecast then, because we do wow! have a... Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Hey, a little... You just blew out my eardrums along That's with everybody like else's speakers. That's like 60% volume. All right. Uh, we got a lot of clouds out there today, and temperatures currently in the low 30s will warm up. Uh, into the mid-30s across much of the area, and uh, winds will be uh, switching to the north on the light side today. Uh, down into the 20s tonight, low 20s with mainly cloudy skies. A little more sunshine for Wednesday, mid-30s, and a few more clouds on Thursday with highs in the mid to upper 30s. And then 40s come back into the forecast as we head into Friday and Saturday with highs. Low 40s on Friday, mid-40s on Saturday. We're still keeping an eye on a potential storm system for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. If you have any travel plans, I know, if you have any travel plans in the Dakotas, I think Minnesota's going to be mainly rain out of this for the most part. But if you have any travel plans in the Dakotas, uh, keep up to date on the forecast um, for Sunday night into Monday. Monday could be pretty slippery across much of the area if you're doing a traveling for Thanks or Thanksgiving for Christmas. Thanksgiving for Christmas. Welcome back, Bridget. Okay, I think we're good now. We was had to this, do a little reconnection there. Was it's this all your, good. was this your iPad when you started the show today? Yes, it's pretty much did. Yes, <laughs> and you know why it blame, you know why it happened? Dun. You may be a bright ray of sunshine there, Justin, but there's enough sunshine out my window Ooh. to power all of the things that got to make stuff work here. How's that sound? There you go. Yes, <laughs> there you go. Hey, uh. Bridget, uh, remember I told you Santa Claus dropped you something off here at the studio, so you've got to make sure you get in yeah. this week. Um, I'm thinking I'll be there Thursday, so y'all perfect. might want to, you know, plan ahead. Well, the check <laughs> is still sitting in the envelope. Oh, we spent that. Yeah. Tried to. Long I tried long to seal gone. it back up as best I could, but it's, you know, like once you rip the glue off, it's. You can tell there's new glue on there. So, yeah, it, you don't have the best skills to be sleuth and detectiving. Hell, what am I trying to say? <laughs> well, hey, it's Christmas week, and uh, have you gotten all your shopping done, Bridget? No. All done. All, all taken right. care of. Are you done? No. Well, well, mostly. Well, for those of you that... I got to shop for you still. For those of you... For me? For you. Oh, I got... I better you see get, that smiley God in his better, voice right there? I for better, me? I better get you something then. <laughs> 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 oh, you weren't planning on getting me something. I got you All something right. last year. Another year of employment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least year another room, week. That's what you get. Uh, so anybody, you keep that, your job. anybody that hasn't uh, finished their Christmas shopping, we're going to be giving something away today. In fact, we'll start it right well, now. Maybe giving it away. Well, we'll see. We're going to be giving away a rain gauge from Productive mm-hmm. Alternatives down in Fergus Falls. Great heavy duty uh, rain gauges. And um, all you have to do is we're going to play, an, uh, we're going to play Guess This Sound. So guess this sound. Oh, I got it. I got it. I know now, what that is. All right, 701-293-9000. If you can guess what that is. That's my dishwasher. <laughs> that's my dishwasher. Oh, you can bridge it. <laughs> you ruined it. All right, we'll try the next one. 701. Sorry. 701-293-9000. That's 701-293-9000. If you can guess that, you'll win a productive alternative rain gauge. You, ha- you cannot have won anything over the last 30 days. And we know if you have as well. 
We and, have a whole database. Yeah. And there's one person that's not allowed to win anything, period. Yeah, anymore. Period. <laughs> they can't even call us anymore. Yeah, so. Hi there, caller. What's your name? Darren. Hey, what Darren. Do you th- Darren, what do you think the sound was? I think it's one of two things, but I think it's that sound a balloon makes as you let the air out real slow. Oh, oh that's a great that is guess. A great guess that's but a that's great guess. That's a good it. guess. I'm oh. Sorry, Darren. Hi yeah. there, caller. What's your name? Scott. Scott, hey, Scott. what's that sound? Letting the air out of a balloon? That no. is not it. That's a great. That's a great. It does sound like that, it does. doesn't it? Hi yeah. there, caller. What's your guess? Is it a pig? It is not no, a pig. No, it's not guess. a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, caller. What was that sound? Uh, was it one of them screaming frogs? It was a screaming there frog. There we yeah. go. What? Yeah. That's, a, that's a frog. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Where'd you hear that before? Uh, social media stuff. Yeah. Hey, what's your, what's your yep. name again? Tyler. Tyler, congrats, man. You haven't won anything over the last 30 days, have you? Nope. All right. Well, well, hang on. Congratulations. You can use this as a uh, nice Christmas present or keep it for yourself. Yeah. Oh, I'll keep it for myself. There, there you, you go. go. Uh, <laughs> it for yourself. Well, Tyler, stay on the line. We'll put you on hold. We got a little more information from our producer. He'll tell you how you can pick this up. You'll, uh, I guess, right here from our studios, you'll need a photo ID to claim it as well from the front desk. Oh, okay. All right. So stay on hold. I'm going to get a little more information from you. All right. Good. It took a while, but that, that does sound like it went quick. Now, you had two of them. I thought I, you were going to do the other one. You had well, two screaming I went frogs. With, you had two, but I went with this one instead because I thought it was a little more discreet. I mean, <laughs> this might just become a new staple of weather and ag and focus. That's not- if you thought this was annoying, <laughs> wait until you hear right. this every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, man. And suddenly our viewership went from 84 to 81. Uh, that was just me. That was, I, yeah. I just canceled out. I'm, I'm done. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. So we do have a guest coming up on the show today, Bridget. We do indeed. And that's going to be Dave Dusenick. And Dave is joining us, uh, I believe, out of Iowa. Digifarm VBN. So we're going to have a chance to say, what's Digifarm, Dave? What are you going to show us and tell us about today? Which I'm kind of enjoying. Uh, On purpose, I didn't go look up a lot. So he would tell us. I have no idea, but I wonder if it has something to do with Digimon. No. No, no, either. None of you? What's that? Google it. Oh, that's right. You don't have a computer. Yeah, the computer. (laughs) junked out here <laughs> sorry that's all right well besides our guests that'll be joining us here in about uh, seven minutes from now we do have a few ag topics that we're going to get to throughout the course of the day uh and one of them i'm, I'm kind of looking forward to talking about because i just find the whole topic interesting uh the first topic that we'll be uh-huh. hitting today is a uh, herbicide pr- persistence in dry weather conditions as well as bees and wasp education and why did that just pop up And our last topic that we'll talk about today is that the uh, Minnesota industrial hemp permits are opening up. So we'll talk about that as well. So which one are you most fascinated in? Oh, I can tell you which one he's most fascinated with. with. Hey, man. Why don't we talk about the Minnesota (laughs) hemp permits? Okay. It's it's hemp. It's not tea. Yeah. It's Ah, industrial hemp. It's industrial. Yeah. Ah, Wrong show. Clear the cloud. Clear the cloud. Yes. We're weather guys. We're always in the clouds, right? (laughs) Some more than others. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, that's all right. I just got I got the drum roll in there for you. So applications are now open. And this is again for the state of Minnesota. This is not the first year that they have done these applications and permits as well as licensing. It is for industrial hemp. You do have until April 30th of 2024 to get your applications in and ready. Now, you've got to do uh, also fingerprinting. So you need an authorized organization to send in your fingerprints. You'll have a background check done. The application fee is $400. So this is something that you're going to have to invest in. To find the application, it is on the Minnesota Department of Agriculture's website. So you can go look for it there. Find all the pros and cons of willing being willing to do it. And remember... Hemp and marijuana are the both 
the same type of or from the same plant, but they differ by concentration mm -hmm. level. So the psychoactive compound THC within the plant when it comes to the industrial hemp has less than 0.3%. So it's very, very small and levels above that would be considered marijuana. And again, I wanna emphasize industrial hemp, not medical grade or adult um, versions of no, hemp. No, so. no, is this something that let, let's say the average farmer would say, all right, you know, let's rotate our crops. We're gonna use hemp this year. Is that something that you can make a lot more money on or is that not really a productive crop in terms of getting money out of? So I think it greatly depends on the year. I've had farmers that went into hemp production, uh, more so for hemp oils, that type of thing here in the last couple of years. When they initially got in, the value of that market was higher than where they are now. A lot of, you know, a lot of times when you enter into a new market, you see that great, that hockey stick where it was level, it really shoots up. Now things have plateaued off. Yeah, but like my hand gestures are helping. I mean, you guys can yeah. see me, but our poor <laughs> listeners have no idea. <laughs> and when that levels off, you're going to see a stabilization in supply, demand, pricing, et cetera. So as for right now, I would say for hemp, there's not a lot of folks that are jumping in brand new, at least when it comes to hemp oils uh, and you know the consumables versus what may be happening for industrial hemp. Okay. But I would be curious if anybody has been raising industrial hemp as of late. And if you are, I'd like for you to let us know. You can reach us on our Red Wing Shoe phone line at 701-293-9000. Be happy to visit with you and probably ask a lot of questions. I don't mind doing that. I'd like to know more about it as well. I know we've had a couple of guests on before. I think it was with hemp production. Yeah, one out of there was one gentleman who grew it up here, and he, for, had, he had the college mm -hmm. team come and cultivate yeah. it for yeah, him. He yes, had, he'd come and pick it. <laughs> yeah, for the uh, that was he was that growing was, it uh, for the fibers, Jesse, right? He was. That was Jesse Bring. He was. He's from uh, Galesburg, North Dakota, and he had the Mayville State College baseball team come out and help to harvest the hemp. I feel like and those so, guys were a little disappointed when they got home that night. <laughs> Man, I don't think they hurts. could tell you either way. They're <laughs> athletes. Yeah. So just uh, how it is. <laughs> and then yeah, then we had the uh the oil farmer down in Missouri. Mm -hmm. Right? The hemp yes, oil. Yes, yeah. we've talked mm -hmm. to Yep, we've talked about hemp oils before. So there's a lot of variations to the hemp plant. It's actually pretty dynamic when you think about the uses for it. You know, hemp growth was really big during World War II as a lot of fiber was needed at the time. You know what I'm thinking? We've had Someone on talking about growing it for fiber, growing it for CBD. Maybe we need to get a THC grower on and see what the difference is between the other two when it comes to that. All right. This is your mission. If you choose to accept Justin Storm, I'm going to need you to find that hemp grower for us. I do actually know of one. I know a guy, I know a guy who, who a guy. used to grow it out in California, and I know a guy who is still a grower out in California for one of the recreational companies out there. So maybe I'll give him huh? a, shoot well, him a message and out. see if he's interested in talking about it. That'd be awesome. All right. Well, we got our guest in the wings. When we come back, we'll be joined with Dave from DigiFarm. And if you want to join in on the conversation and ask some questions, uh, feel free to do so on the Red Wing Shoes phone line. That's 701-293-9000. Emails to the program are weather or ag at flagfamily.com, as well as our live comment box is available there on the live streams on Facebook as well as YouTube. Stay tuned. Weather and Ag in Focus will be right back. Livestock trade remains mixed into the afternoon close. You're listening to the American Ag Network. I'm Jesse Allen with this market update. Also, take a look at cattle and hog trade here as we're wrapping up the day. Cattle tried to trade higher for a little bit on Tuesday morning, but we've since given back all of that and then some as we're now trading in the red here as we look to wrap things up on this Tuesday. It was really just a, a mixed trading day overall as we uh, worked through the midday buyer support to eroding here following the initial release of cattle on feed estimates hitting the market. At this point, there's very limited movement in live and feeder cattle trade, although the focus is moving from strong early week gains to moderately mixed price moves. Now, I'm going to be watching as traders will be looking to try and uh, square up positions ahead of that cattle on feed report coming up here on Friday after the close. Early estimates point to an average estimate of 2% increases from year ago on feed numbers. 
This has softened early 2024 contract prices, as I mentioned here at midday and into the afternoon. Cash cattle activity remains uh, pretty much at a standstill. Bids and asking prices still not well developed. Box beef is mixed with choice up two cents, 288.95. Select is down 30 cents at 236.42. And feeder cattle futures as well have pulled back, although larger placement numbers are not expected. The recent market rally has started to factor into the potential that significant pullback of cattle placed in feed yards may help build additional optimism heading into the new year. On the hog side, pork cutout values are up 101 at 85.54. Barrow and gilt prices in Dorchester, Wisconsin and Gardeville, Iowa. Trends are steady with prices at 44 in both locations. You're listening to the American Ag Network. Wheat Growers of the North, it's time to push performance with Westbred Wheat. With regionally proven varieties like WB9606 with good stress tolerance and WB9719 with outstanding yield potential and excellent standability. Trust Westbred Wheat to help you get the most out of every acre. Now's the time. Boldly grow. Seize the season with Westbred Wheat. Performance may vary. Read and follow pesticide label directions, grain marketing, and other stewardship practices. When it comes to cereal disease protection, Prosaro Pro 400 SC fungicide from Bayer makes all the difference. With three effective active ingredients for overlapping control of foliar and head diseases and a flexible application window for head scab, it's formulated to lower dawn, protect yield potential, and promote superior grain quality. Prosaro Pro, the future of plant health starts here. Visit prosaropro.com to learn more. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. As we head to the close, we see live cattle for December down 17, 168.65. January feeder cattle down 117, 222. February hogs 85 lower at 70.72. This is the American Ag Network. This is Weather and Ag in Focus with Richard Riedel, Justin Storm, and Dean Wysocki. And thank you for joining us here on Weather and Ag in Focus. Thank you. For that Fisher Price barn door sounder right there, Justin. I like that. Appreciate it. <laughs> Very welcome. All right. Just a little heads up for folks. You can be bidding on a sedan or an SUV exterior protection plan from Extreme Detailing. It's ceramic protection and it provides seven years of exterior protection with a warranty valued at $1,800. Bidding starts at $250 and that will begin at 7 a.m. on Thursday morning. You can find it on our Big Deals page on our website, WDAYRadioNow.com. Honestly, I have always wanted to do this on my own pickup. So that might be me bidding on something. We'll find out. Go for it. You probably get a good deal on it. Does an SUV count as a pickup or am I somehow going to get gypped in this deal? (laughs) Maybe I I should find out the details. I think that all trucks are SUVs, but not all SUVs are trucks. You know, kind of like the whiskey bourbon thing. Ah, very nice. Thanks for making that so clear for me. I appreciate it. (laughs) You're welcome. (laughs) All right. Someone else who's going to make things very clear for us is today's guest, and that is David Dusanek. I think I said that right. David is with Digifarm VBN. David, how are you today? Oh, hang on. We're waiting for sound from David. We do not have any sound coming from David. We can see you, David. We don't have any sound coming from you. So we'll try and get that figured out here. We'll get that squared away. In the it mo- shouldn't take but a moment. It should only Apparently, take about there's a some sort of gremlin that took away my sound and David's sound. It's just letting the two of you talk. Must be the lack of sunshine today, huh? <laughs> I love that one. We've got, too. <laughs> it's probably squirrels. <laughs> Sparky the squirrel is chewing on power lines again. Yeah, right. <laughs> Why don't we hit some egg Actually, topics? Actually, hold on, hold on. That squirrel thing, a little side note here. Yeah. When the kids were little, they had a tree house. And being the cool person that I am, I took Christmas lights out there and wound them around the railing of the tree house so that we could just run an extension cord and it would be lit at night in the summer. It's and lit. then we weren't out there for a few days and the squirrels got mad and chewed through the Christmas lights like every other wire they chewed through. Wow. That is just vengeful. <laughs> Between that and them stealing my tiny pumpkins, this is why squirrels are on my hit list. I am just saying. That's why they call them tree rats. <laughs> yeah, we got a pair of red ones that are 
just running a nuisance in our neighborhood between getting in people's garages and eating all my bird <laughs> seed. It's like, come on, guys. I don't buy the bird seed for you. I buy it for the birds. <laughs> it's like you're living a Disney movie. They just want to get in your house. <laughs> well, they stash everything. I mean, Jay had a story of some squirrels that got into his garage, and they were, like, taking his shirts, his hats, his tools, and hiding them up in the, the soffits of his garage roof. I still say that was his wife. Wow. <laughs> I, I think she was just messing with them. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> okay, we're going to see if we can get David to connect. Um, I just made sure he had our, our phone line. And so that also applies to anybody who's listening. If you have questions for us throughout today's show, you can reach us on the Red Wing Shoe phone line of 701-293-9000. We'd be happy for you to reach out and connect with us there. Meanwhile, as far as what's going on in ag, here's one more thing to get to. I realize we're probably past the bee and wasp season. And throughout the summer, when people th uh. think about bees, they're like, oh, the flowers, they make honey. Bees are great. But as soon as you say wasp, it gets a little angry. People don't like talking about wasps, right? Murder hornets. <laughs> so <laughs> close. Okay. Wasps are indeed more aggressive than bees, that naturally so. But Wasps can be helpful to us agriculturally as well. There are actually parasitic wasps out there that will eat other aphids or other caterpillars in order to prevent them being predatory on our cropping system. So they might not be eating our soybeans if the wasp is in fact eating that particular pest. Um, wasps can sting multiple times. Like with a bee, their stinger is barbed. So once they sting you, the, the stinger pulls out. But when it comes to a wasp, they can sting you and they can take the stinger with because the females need that to lay eggs. And that way they can still get to, to be those murder hornets, Justin. They will continue to sting other people as they go along. Mm. But they they can be helpful to us agriculturally. They're just a little bit more aggressive than you might expect when it comes to dealing with bees, etc. And they're rather territorial, by the way. They, whenever, they like where they put their hive. Indeed they do. And whenever I think of them bees and wasp and during this whole conversation all i can think <laughs> about is the skit that joe rogan did about bees in one of his stand-up comedy shows i don't know if you I saw it or not and it, it's something i can't play for you but it's like oh bee uh <laughs> a bee flying around he's like oh there's a little family and a baby over there i'm gonna go oh good lord and just, i don't know it's just <laughs> You had, to, you had to listen to it. Don't you had okay. you got to listen All to right. it. I'll play it for you when we're done with the show. It's funny. Right. <laughs> Jacob, do we have Excellent. our uh, guest on the phone line right now? All right. Great. So why don't we bring our guest in? It looks like David. Welcome to Weather and Egg and Focus. Can you hear us? Thank you. I can. I've been hearing you guys. So I, I think it's a technical hiccup on my end that you couldn't hear me. So. Well, we can hear you now. That's great. Awesome. All right, David. Digi, uh, Digi Farm. Tell us more. I mean, yeah. I, you and I connected basically through the, the internet. And so I'm waiting to learn more about your business. Please share. Yeah. So social media does wonders, right? So um, <laughs> yeah, it was nice meeting you. Uh, yeah. So Digi Farm, um, kind of a 50,000 50, foot level overview. Uh, Digifarm is a GPS company. So when you guys were talking about uh, chemicals and herbicides and bees, you forgot to throw Digifarm in as maybe the most interesting topic of the day. But uh, so excellent. <laughs> um, so we are a GPS company. Uh, we started off in the agricultural arena. Uh, so as you drive down the road, at least in Iowa, you know we're a little more row crop. You guys, you guys have become a lot more row crop up there, though. Um, in recent yes. years, but down here, almost everything's row crop. I mean, it's ditch to ditch, right? And so all those straight mm -hmm. rows that you see, just the kind of boom, 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 as you look out your window and look look across those fields, that's that's essentially what Digifarm does. So Digifarm is a, a service provider, uh, very much like you might subscribe to, say, XM Satellite Radio. You turn your, your truck on and you turn on XM and you pick your favorite station and you hear the audio when you get in your tractor spray or combine uh, it's a turnkey solution you subscribe to digifarm and your gps receiver is locked in 
within a few seconds to about a half an inch to an inch of repeatable uh, position. So that's what makes those straight rows, what makes those ditches to have a, uh, a little bit of grade from one end of the field to the other when you're putting tile in to make sure you have grade. Um, in a nutshell, we're, we're a service provider. We started back in 2010, 2011 timeframe, uh, essentially just providing GPS for agriculture. Uh, by about 2016 or so, we recognized the need for uh, hardware within the cab as well. And we started kind of making our way into the hardware side of the industry. Um, ironically, we, we went through the R&D and testing phase of our first product. Um, we were ready to launch our product. I, I want to say it was fall of 2020. And then this thing called COVID hit. So um, <laughs> we, we went from we've got years of R&D into this to let's build a product. And then the world suddenly couldn't build anything anymore. <clears throat> um, so we started building cellular modems that go in cabs because that's how we move our GPS data into your cab is through a cell modem. We use commercial off the shelf modems and you know, they, they worked to an extent, they, but they missed all the little pieces that, that we needed for a very specific application like ours. Um, so that's when we got into, into hardware, into software, into manufacturing. Uh, we, ironically 3d printed our way through COVID because <laughs> it was the only way that you could manufacture anything. And, um, you know, you, you had a product that functionally worked very well. Uh, aesthetically, it wasn't quite as pleasing to the eye as what we'd hoped it might be, but it was, it was a useful product nonetheless today, you know, kind of, if we can call this post COVID, um, we finally have a product that it's sleek, it looks nice. It looks like anything you'd see from one of the big box uh, premier dealers out there, the red, green, blue guys. So, um, yeah, so we do a, a fair bit of hardware and software uh, with products that we sell. Um, but essentially, we're a service provider in, in the ag space. And we've, in the last few years, branched off into other divisions as well. So... Um, we're kind of dipping our toe in some other pools as well. Right on. And Dave, are you a uh, are you a farmer yourself? I mean, how did you come up with this idea um, that you know, hey, this is something that our ag community does need? Um, yeah. So I was an electrical engineer for about a decade, and then I I kind of jokingly, half seriously, say that DigiFarm was born. Um, I either have my, my dad to blame or to thank for it. And some days I blame him, and for the most part, I thank him. Uh, so we farm. It's a family farming operation, and he wanted reliable GPS for our farm. And I couldn't find anything commercially available that really worked for us to suit all of our needs. And dad said, well, why don't you just build something? And I thought, well, that's what I love to do. I like to design stuff. So, yeah, I'll just go build it. And I really didn't have any idea what I had kind of signed up for. Um, <laughs> I thought this would be pretty easy in a month or so. You know, I'm going to knock this software out, build some hardware, and we'll have GPS for the farm. And, boy, it was One eternity a later. later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Earning my parents' time. Um, you know, mom would sit out in a tractor for – I, she, if she had a job, she would have had to retire for me to start this because all she did is sit in a tractor looking at a monitor. Hey, Dave, we've got GPS. <laughs> Great. Uh, and it's gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was, those celebrations were, they were quick and you get them out from under your belt. You celebrate because a minute later it, it may not be working anymore. So um, it was a journey learning GPS and learning satellites and learning IT and learning cellular. And as interesting as, as all of it is, um, it's so much more complex than what I ever realized. So you, you had a, a redneck farm kid with an engineering degree who was trying to build a system. And by a whole lot of grace and blessings, 
it did finally come to fruition. We had something that worked for our farm. Uh, I put laptops, I guess we call them netbooks back then, with solid state mm -hmm. hard drives in them because, you know, a spinning platter type of hard drive, that worked for the first 40 acres. And then, you know, your hard drive needed shock absorbers on it as you traveled across those rough fields. And so I was breaking <laughs> laptops and, and I had wires coming out. You know, it looked like Charlotte's Web coming out the back end of that laptop. Um, but functionally, it worked. Um, and so our farm ran it for a year. Uh, I had laptops in every tractor. Uh, mom would run one, dad would run one, I would run one, uh, you'd be going across the field and somebody would call up mom or dad, Hey, I lost GPS. And so I'm trying to diagnose this over the phone. And I said, you know, why don't you just restart the application? Just hit hold down control, alt delete on the laptop. Okay. Hold down control. There's, <laughs> there's, there's an alt button on there. You just got to find it. Um, <laughs> right. It's easy to realize that this is not going to work uh, as a commercially viable business selling laptops to put in these tractors. So right. that's when I realized the laptops, the wireless air cards, that all had to go. And it, we had to come up with something that was what we like to call today a turnkey solution. Right. So well, Dave, I'm going to cut you off right here. We got to hit bottom yeah. of the hour, a few minutes past, which is sure. all right. But we got to get in on local news here real quick. So hang on to that thought. When we come back, we'll pick this conversation up with Dave from uh, Digifarm VBN. If you want to join in on the conversation, ask some questions. 701-293-9000 is the Red Wing Shoes phone line. Moorhead Girls Basketball takes a ride down Highway 10 tonight for an encounter with Detroit Lakes. This is Larry Knutson for Spud Sports on 970 WDAY 93.1 FM. The Spuds are chasing down their second win of the year, taking on the Lakers. Stay tuned, 7.30 tonight, Moorhead and Detroit Lakes. The Moorhead Spuds are on the air on AM 970 and 93.1 FM WDAY Radio. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting A Teenager Learning the Lingo GOAT, G-O-A-T Acronym Stands for Greatest of All Time As in Spaghetti Sandwiches for Dinner They're my fave Dad, you're the GOAT You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same Visit AdoptUSKids.org Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Adopt U.S. Kids and the Ad Council the holiday season is right around the corner. So give the gift that's hard to wrap, but easy to give. Give them a steal. With powerful trimmers, blowers, and chainsaws to place under the tree, the Steel Holiday Gift Guide has something for everyone. Save $30 on the GTA 26 battery-powered garden pruner. Visit your local steel dealer or go to steelusa.com slash gift guide. Real steel. Find yours. Now $149.99 was $179.99 MSRP. Offer valid for a limited time only at participating dealers while supplies last. Good afternoon, I'm Tom Tucker, WDAY News First. The Bismarck man accused of causing the death of a Mercer County Sheriff deputy has made his second appearance in South Central District Court. Ian Kramer appeared Monday for a hearing on new charges, including homicide. In Monday's hearing, the judge determined Kramer will continue to be held on bond set at $500,000. Kramer's preliminary hearing is set for February 7th. The executive director of the Fargo Airport Authority is looking forward to the addition of a new parking ramp at the airport. It's a project that's been on our master plan for a number of years, uh, just uh, trying to find a way forward to pay for it financially. Sean Doberstein says city tax dollars will not be used to pay for the new $40-plus million structure. Workers at the Freedom Mine near Beulah made an important geological discovery this year, the remains of a prehistoric woolly mammoth. The coal miners found the remains over Memorial Day weekend, though the discovery hasn't been announced until now. And members of the Minnesota State Emblems Redesign Commission hope to wrap up their work on a new design for the state flag today. The commission has until January 1st to complete their final report to state lawmakers recommending the new state flag and seal. Tom Tucker, WDAY and WDAYRadioNow.com. Lots of things can cause back pain, like discs, nerves, joints, and muscles. 
Wouldn't it make sense to have a treatment specific to the one that's actually causing your problem? That's why we do more than just get you in line. We work hard to find out what's causing your pain and apply the right strategy to help it. That's why 96% of the pain conditions you have usually can be helped. Don't take it from me, Dr. Z. Here's Doug. Well, when I went in to see Dr. Z, I could hardly stand and I could hardly sit. It was just a constant pain. So I really couldn't do much of anything. That uh, spinal decompression was a miracle for me. It took the away the pain completely. I don't have the pain anymore, which is absolutely wonderful. I can actually do what I used to do before. Tired of the pain? Want to get back to being you? Call the clinic and tell them Dr. Z sent you. 701-492-0696 or find us at theclinicnow.com. The FMWF Chamber presents the State of the Cities, January 11th at the Delta by Marriott in Fargo. Join our five Metro mayors as they cover the biggest topics, challenges, and future plans for our communities. Thanks to premier sponsor XL Energy. Keep yourself and your business connected with an interactive Q&A with the mayors as they discuss plans for our growing Metro. The State of the Cities, January 11th at the Delta by Maria. Reserve your tickets at fmwfchamber.com. Weather and Ag in Focus on WDAY Radio. Welcome back and thank you for joining us today here on Weather and Ag in Focus. Our guest today is Dave Dusenick. He is with Digifarm VBN and Dave before you go back to describing the whole process of getting to where you are, I realized, have you gotten your mom and dad a Christmas gift yet? Because I have an idea for you. Oh, yeah. I've had that done for a long time. A few hours now I've had that done for. <laughs> oh, that, you way to I get go. Him something else? <laughs> well, I had an idea, and that I was, do. I do you need, said mom and I always need more ideas. Okay. Mom and dad were in the tractor cabs as they as you were trying to diagnose with laptops and make sure everything was up and running. How about a set of t-shirts that say uh, tractor cab test dummy because I could get those for the three of us too and we could have matching shirts with everyone. <laughs> oh, for sure. And we could even put you on the payroll, I bet too. So, Oh, sign me up then. They, 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 worked, they, they worked free of charge to begin with, but we're, we're in the black now, so we can, ah, awesome. we can, we can afford a little more. <laughs> <laughs> so as you were describing what it is that you do and what we can expect from Digifarm, you said you had a lot of trial and error to get to the point where you were today, like literally breaking laptops. And so now sounds like that part of the test run is over. Would that be a fair statement? It is. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a pretty good idea, pretty good handle on what we're doing now. Um, but with new products and new services, uh, always comes new hurdles. So uh, mm -hmm. now it's more than just myself. So we've got a we've got a very strong team on our design side. Uh, but there's, you know, it's tech. So you're you're never done learning. But that's one mm -hmm. part of the business that I that I really enjoy. Um, I'm always I'm always looking for something new to 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 learn, something new to study. Uh, you know, and ultimately that brings new products and services to the market for the farmers of, of America here. So, and Dave, I think All I right. thought I saw on your website that you were in 35 states. Is that correct? Yeah, we're probably in all of 35 to 40 by now. So, um, yeah, we started off in ag and we've, we've started to get into other industries. So we've got a couple other couple other companies that go under different names and that's kind of forced us into uh into the municipalities the chicago's and minneapolis's and and the fargo's and you know the the bigger the bigger more populated areas as well so so we started in 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 ag and we cover i'm gonna say about 90 to 95 percent of the roughly what 200 million acres that that North American farmers plant every year. Wow! And so now mm -hmm. we've started kind of getting into into the more urban areas as well. So so that number will continue to grow as as time moves forward here. Wow! That is I, all right. The electrical engineer in you just a few just a few years ago. Did you think that this was on your horizon? Did you have any idea 
the size and scope of what you would be doing today? Never. No, no. I was, <laughs> what I was looking for, farming is my first love. It's, it's what I was born to do. Uh, but with any, with any family farming operation, you know, there comes the peaks and valleys of the economic side of things. And my real goal was creating, you know, something supplemental. I could go get a job just about, you know, any of us can go get a job, but trying to balance that with a farming addiction, that gets kind of tough. So I thought, well, gosh, if I just start something of my own, well, then I can do that in the off season. And that's kind of how it started for the first few years. And now it's, there's no off season. It's, uh, um, you know, it turned, it went from engineering and development to marketing and then managing people and then managing teams. And so, no, I, I would have never, ever guessed that it would have turned into anything like it has today. And it's been real tough. Um, like any business that you build from the bottom up, there's a lot of challenges, but I've been extremely blessed in and where it all has gone to today so yeah it's it's been a journey for sure and you have built quite a lot there is no doubt so let's say that folks have an interest they're they're listening to our discussion and they're saying how do i test drive this so to speak so where do they start david is it a call to you is it a visit to the website how do we kind of get the ball rolling for those who might have an interest in what you're doing yeah, if, you, if you've got a computer, a laptop, a smartphone, you can go to the website, and that's just www.digifarm.com, or you can just type Digifarm into the search engine, and it's going to pop up, and they, there will be a section there that says Contact Us, and in there, you'll see uh, a phone number, you'll see email addresses, um, you can reach out to, so we've got a support number in there, we've got uh, technical resources if you're already a customer. If you're looking for service or you want to test it out, in there is also going to be the name of our uh, reps, and they can hook you up with uh, a test run. They can set you up. You know, you're very likely going to have a dealer in your immediate area, and we can point you towards that dealer if you'd rather work through a dealer, which that's what we encourage. Uh, otherwise, we do take customers on directly as well. But you can find all of that contact information right there on our website. And uh, I think we got a hey. caller here real quick. I'm just going to take him real quick. Hi there, caller. You got a question for Dave? Yeah, just a quick question. Want me to ask you or want me to ask him? Yeah, you're on. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, just real quick. How old a tractor will this work in? Because I've got friends in northeastern Minnesota that they don't have a lot of this new stuff at all. I mean, they really don't. So how old of equipment will this work? So when when I started all of this, we make everything. I, I design with my farmer hat on. So we have gone to a, a great length to make sure that we're legacy compliant, so we're backwards compatible to nearly anything on the market today. So as long as you have a GPS receiver, you'll, you'll need some basic equipment. You'll need the GPS receiver on your tractor. And as long as you have that, mm -hmm. Digifarm has made the effort to uh, develop and maintain compatibility to every GPS system that we've ever seen in North America. We have, we have uh, built software to maintain or to, to develop the compatibility to communicate with. So age of equipment, is irrelevant it's uh you you just have to have the proper gps equipment and we support legacy gps equipment going way back into the 90s when when high precision gps was just first starting so so we don't make you buy something brand new um and in fact you can buy equipment from digifarm or you can buy it from in, your favorite dealer out there as well so so we really do think with our farmer hat on we try to stay cost conscious and make sure that we're compatibility with all the older legacy stuff as well. Okay, so my friend, his tractor's from the 70s. Sure. There are uh, Ag Leader, Trimble, uh, both of those companies, they make equipment that will retrofit onto tractors from the 70s, where the steering column okay. pops off or an augmented steering wheel 
uh, small little foam wheel will sit to the side of the steering wheel. And so with the purchase of one of those products and then a subscription to Digifarm, you can enjoy that sub inch repeatable accuracy that, you know, the big, new, expensive, shiny stuff uh, comes, you know, straight out of the factory with. So, yep, there are absolutely systems out there. In fact, the very first system we started with on our farm was one of those systems. It was a retrofit onto, it was an older four wheel drive tractor that did not have auto steer. It did not have a platform built for it. Uh, we bought an aftermarket system. We bolted it on the steering column and we started pushing Digifarm GPS into it. And, and we enjoyed auto steer for the first time on a, on a tractor that was never, ever designed to have auto steer on it. Wow. That's super cool. Hey, thanks caller for calling in with a question. Appreciate it. We got to get rolling here on time. Dave, appreciate you joining us here on the show today. Again, the website for someone interested in getting more information is just digifarm.com, correct? That's correct. You do a, a Google search for Digifarm and, and it'll pop right up there at the top for you. All right. Well, awesome. appreciate it, Dave. Thanks for joining us today. When we come back, we have another ag topic and a check on the forecast. And if you got a last minute question, 701-293-9000. Santa needs new boots this Christmas. Oh no, if Santa doesn't get new boots, there'll be no Christmas. Fear not, little ones. Santa won't be slipping down the chimney in worn out boots this year. Hi, Teresa here from the Fargo Red Wing Shoe Store. We've got the perfect fit for Santa's big night. Comfort, durability, and style. Because even Santa deserves to strut his stuff. So worry not, kiddos. Christmas is back on track. All thanks to the Fargo Red Wing Shoe Store. Come on down and help us keep the magic alive. I'm Eric, and I have a life-changing story to share with you. Before Cirrusit, life was overwhelming. I thought it was the norm for us busy folks, always on the go, always tired. But then I tried Cirrusit. Things changed. I became laser-focused, completing one task before moving on. Stress became manageable. No more wandering thoughts, just clear, efficient thinking. Cirrusit, it's a life changer. Call 701-566-5231. That's 566-5231. I began my battle with addiction at a young age, leading me into a life of destruction and homelessness. Discovering I was pregnant left me angry, considering termination, but I knew having this baby would change me deeply. My name is Autumn, and the Perry Center transformed my life. With their support and the help of our donors, me and my baby's basic needs are met, and we have a solid support system. This is Autumn's story, a journey from despair to hope. To partner with us, visit perrycenter.org. That's Center. Dot org. With Jiffy Lube MultiCare, it's our job to make car care make sense. With personalized service reviews that swap the car talk for straight talk so you know what your car is telling you and what to do about it. Where highly trained service technicians have your back, helping you take care of the small stuff before it becomes big stuff. Plus a full range of services from Pennzoil oil changes to tires, brakes, batteries, and more. We've got what your car needs, so you're ready for whatever's next. Putting you in the driver's seat of car care, that's a job for Jiffy. Jiffy Lube, 620 Dakota Avenue, Wapaton. Get ready to savor the moments and share the joy this holiday season. Give the gift of great food to fuel their fun at Kingpins. Now through Sunday, December 24th, visit Kingpins and pick up the perfect gift for your loved ones. When you purchase a $25 Barron's gift card, you'll receive a $5 bonus Barron's gift card, buy a $50 Barron's gift card, and we'll add a $10 bonus Barron's gift card to your purchase. And for those who go big with a $100 Barron's gift card, you'll get a whopping $25 bonus Barron's gift card. Food and beverage gift cards are redeemable at Barron's, 48 Lounge, and Axis Tilt. This holiday season, it's all about good food and great memories. Visit Kingpins today and make your holiday gift giving extra special. Don't miss out on this limited time offer at Kingpins in Fargo. For more than 50 years, Welton's Tire Service in Lisbon has been your trusted source for top-tier tire services and vehicle maintenance. Welton's experts are ready to tackle all your tire and branded tire needs at affordable prices and offer preventative vehicle maintenance, on-farm tire service, and equipment repairs. Experience top-notch customer service and dependable, honest work at Welton's Tire Service on Main Street in Lisbon. Online at weltonstire.net.
Attention homeowners, Legacy Plumbing and Heating is on a mission to deliver the best plumbing and heating experience in town. No heat, no problem. We don't just fix symptoms, we tackle the root cause of your issue. Our incredible service professionals are here to ensure your comfort, and our estimates and second opinions are absolutely free. No strings attached. We're not just tooting our own horn. We've been voted the best HVAC service in the Red River Valley. Experience the Legacy difference today. And remember, life flows better with Legacy. This is Weather and Ag in Focus with Bridget Riedel, Justin Storm, and Dean Wysocki. And welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus. We got about yeah, a little over four minutes left in the show. A couple of ag topics and a check on the forecast. But first, we're going to head over to the Red Wing Shoes phone line. We got Matthew on the line. And uh, Matthew, I believe you got a weather comment or question. Is that right? Well, it's, it's just a comment about I, I only heard the the sounder in the beginning in the U.S. had the contest. I never heard who the winner was, but I know exactly what that sound is. That sound is a screaming goat being hit by a vehicle and drug for a little ways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty sure. That's what it sounded like to me. Now, I, I got, do have a comment, though. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That, that thing got hit hard. Um, but... Uh, well, my my question for, my question for Dean, I have two just very quick comments. Is you know I'd like to talk to HR now. Not what you probably think though. I want to get an application because you know I heard he got his teeth cleaned last week, yes. but he got to take like half the week off. Yes. I want that deal. Who gets that? You, that's called negotiating <laughs> yeah. when you first signed your contract. <laughs> and that's the all other point. That's the I'll pay you ten grand if you can write a note saying I can't go to work for a week. There you go. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But I want to follow up on one other thing on the hemp conversation too, since we're talking to HR about Dean. That is not hemp in his pocket, folks. I'm just telling you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, Matthew's out to get Ooh, you, Dean. Man, he needs a rim shot on that one. Huh? <laughs> Merry Christmas, guys. Yeah, Merry Thanks, Christmas, Matt. Merry Matt. Christmas. Thank you. I think I think I know who that may have been. <laughs> Well, we're looking at a lot of clouds around this afternoon with temperatures in the 30s, which is still well above where we should be for this time of the year. Light winds out of the north. And as we head into tonight, we're looking at mainly cloudy skies, lows in the low 20s, and tomorrow a little more sunshine, still in the mid-30s. We'll stay in the mid to upper 30s as we head into Thursday, 40s, Friday and Saturday. And again, we're still watching the potential of a Christmas Eve, Christmas storm uh, Christmas Day storm coming into the area. So it looks like a rain changing to snow kind of thing. Uh, could have an area of icing, uh, freezing rain as well. Just so, yeah, it could be a little messy Christmas Day. So keep up to date on the forecast. We'll fine tune this forecast as we head throughout the, uh, throughout the week. But it looks like east of the valley in Minnesota, mainly rain. You go west of the valley, that's where you might be running into some problems. So, again, we'll update you on that as we head. <laughs> Oh my God! Okay, it's happening. Everybody, stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, stay calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody, you calm down. We'll update you as we head throughout the week. But if you have any travel plans, Christmas Eve night or Christmas Day, um, yeah, please keep up to date on the forecast as things could get a little bit tricky around here. Something to keep a close well, eye on. Well, guess what you just did to mine. My travel plans now just shot right out the window because let's face it. I wait, might have been wait. going west. Yeah, did, go didn't we it. say watch we the just... models pull it west and north? And, and north, and they have. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. that trend continues. I know you are amazing. Forget the models in We're just so many bridges, bad ways. Right, man, I'm telling you, <laughs> <laughs> it's just me. Well, that'll wrap it up for Weather and Ag and Focus today. Thanks to all the uh, commenters, the emails, the callers. We appreciate it. We're back tomorrow, 1 to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The Jay Thomas Show is coming up next. Are your trees in?